Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at recommended telescopes in various price categories. $200, $500, $1,000, $2,500, $5,000, $10,000, and $50,000. So let's take a look. So a couple of ground rules here. We are looking at US dollars at the time of filming. We are also only going to be considering optical tubes and mounts. That's no eyepieces, diagonals, finders, rings, plates, software, imaging equipment, my goodness. You can easily go down a rabbit hole with those items. We're just going to be looking at optical tube assemblies and mounts. So let's get started. So this category is the one I probably get asked about more than any of the others. It's also the hardest one to fill because everything that you buy in this ultra budget category is going to have a compromise of some kind. The trick here is to minimize those compromises or find ways to work around them. So in this under $200 category, the item that you can buy that has the least number of compromises, surprisingly, is a pair of binoculars. That's right, a pair of binoculars, you can get a pair of 7x35s or 7x50s. Those are good ones to start off with in astronomy. These are 7x35s. But even if you have a pair of binoculars lying around the house, like many people do, take them off the shelf and go outside on any clear night. In fact, if it's clear out right now while you're looking at this and it's nighttime, go outside and look. Go ahead, stop the video. I'll wait. So did you do it? Did you go outside? Oh, come on, go ahead and do it. So even if you don't know what you're looking at, you might be surprised if you've never done this before, just how much fun you're going to have looking at the sky with a pair of binoculars. Now, if you want to take the next step, you can get a star atlas or an app on your phone, or I use one of these. It's a planisphere. You dial in the time and the date, and it shows you what's up in the night sky. It takes the Earth a year ago to go around the sun, so if you do this activity, you're going to be entertained for an entire year before you have to think about buying anything else. So if you want to take the next step and get a telescope, there are two or three models that have dominated this ultra-budget category for some time now. One of them is this Orion Short Tube 80. It's an 80 millimeter refractor, and it's a pretty compact package at a reasonable price. The only disadvantage here is it's an optical tube only, so you're going to have to come up with a mount of your own. Put the heaviest possible tripod you can underneath it, and again, a star chart like this one or an app on your phone will help you to discover what you're looking at. Second item is this Orion Star Blast. This is one that we've, uh, we've tricked this out in our club because we donate these to libraries. So the one you buy is going to be a little less fancy than this one. But unlike the refractor where you look into the back, this uses a mirror to gather light and you look into the side of the front and it comes with a nice base like this that you can move up and down and left and right. The disadvantage of this model is you have to find something to set it on. So I recommend that you get it up at least 30 inches off the ground. It should be something very sturdy and something that you can walk around. The third telescope is an AWB-1 Sky. I don't have one of those right now. I'm supposed to be getting one of those in, but it is very similar to this Star Blast, except it's slightly larger. Buy any of these three telescopes. They should be under $200 but the sellers sometimes offer deals and packages. It could be a little bit more or it could be a little bit less. Do your shopping. So at the $500 level, this is by far the easiest of the categories to fill. Get yourself an eight inch Dobsonian reflector. This is not only the best telescope to buy at this price level, it is the best beginner telescope that I've been recommending for over 20 plus years. I don't see any reason to change. I've said this so many times, but an 8-inch Dobsonian is cheap, it's simple, and it will teach you a lot. It will last you for a long time, possibly even forever. Yes, that's right, people buy these things and they sometimes never even feel the need to upgrade ever again. So I have the Orion X-T8. That's probably the most popular model that you're going to see out there. But there are several clone models out there that are based on the same platform. They're all recommended. I don't think I've ever seen a bad 8-inch Dobsonian. So if Orion's out of stock or if you can find a deal at one of the other suppliers with accessories or price or delivery that's more to your liking, go ahead and go for it. You should buy one of these. And by the way, did I mention you should buy one of these?
So at the $1,000 level, I found this category very hard to fill. You would think that would be easy. $1,000 is a good sum of money and it's a nice round number, but you know, nothing's really jumping out at me. I have several candidates that will probably work and I'm just gonna pick one of these for you. I'm gonna pick a Celestron Nexstar 6. It's a six inch mid-caster grain on a single sided fork arm go-to mount. And it makes a pretty good case for being a good all around telescope that will do everything. The keeper here is the C6 optical tube. This is a well-known quantity. You can take it off this mount and put it on others. The mount itself, I've written extensively about these Nexstar mounts. I've owned a number of them. I would say they're good. I wouldn't say they're great. I wouldn't say they're awful either. They're just plain good. People write to ask me, it's cheaper than a CPC or an AVX. Those are a little bit higher up in Celestron's line. Well, there's a reason. The good stuff costs more, it's more reliable, and it's more accurate. So this particular Nexstar that's behind me here is kind of buried in the back there. It's good, like I said. Uh, it has been back to the factory twice now for repairs, and it's worked fine for the past several years. I do still use it a lot. The accuracy is good, again. Uh, there is, has a tendency to have some dead spots in the sky where it's less accurate than in other areas of the sky. This is fairly common. Again, you can't expect everything here. There have been a couple of different versions of this next star. You'll spend somewhere between $800 and $1,000. I'm gonna give you a second option for this $1,000 category. And I, in some ways, I like this one even better than my first choice. My second choice, $1,000, is to get an eight inch Dobsonian. That's right, it's the same recommendation as the $500 level. I have said this before, but if I were getting started in this hobby today and had $1,000 to spend, I would get an eight inch Dobsonian and save the rest of my money. So next to the sub $200 level, the $2,500 category is probably the area where I get asked about more than any of the others. It makes sense. It's a good sum of money and you can get yourself something that will keep you busy for a very long time. And this category also very easy to fill. I'm just going to pick an old standby, an 8 inch mid caster grain on an equatorial go-to mount. I'm going to move you from an alt as to an equatorial mount. There's a reason for that which you'll see very shortly. And I'm just gonna pick a brand. I'm gonna pick a Celestron C8 on an AVX mount. If you're a Mead person, you can, you can pick an eight inch ACF on their LX85 mount. The two brands are very similar. Pick your camp. An eight inch mid-caster grain on this kind of mount is very versatile. It's a do-it-all telescope. It's a jack of all trades and just very easy to recommend. 1,800 to $2,000 depending on which version you buy and what deal ha deals happen to be offered at that time. So the reason I'm moving you to an equatorial mount is I'm going to start getting you used to swapping out different optical tubes onto the same mount. So I'm going to buy with the additional $500 that we have in our budget, one additional optical tube, and I'm going to pick the old reliable Orion ED80. We're going to get you into that world of the apochromatic refractor, give you a little taste of that refractor magic, see if you like it. A four inch refractor and an eight inch mid caster grain do make a very good combination. So the next two categories are going to be very similar. $5,000 and $10,000 US, we're gonna build off of the collection that we had at the $2,500 level. So at the $5,000 level, we're gonna go ahead and keep the eight inch mid caster grain that we had before. Second telescope we're gonna buy is, you guessed it, an eight inch Dobsonian reflector. I find that if you have an eight inch mid-caster grain and the Dobsonian together out at the same time, they can complement each other very much because of the differences in focal length and the differences between a manual scope and a computer driven one. Okay, so we spent half of our $5,000 budget. What are we gonna do with the other half? Well, we're gonna blow the entire rest of the budget on one killer refractor. And the one I'm gonna pick for you is a Takahashi FC100. 
This is the heirloom. This is the one you're never going to sell. This is the telescope you're going to hand down to your kids. The new one is fantastic, but if you can't find a new one, they did make an older version. That is very desirable as well. If you can find a used FS-102, you can save a little bit of money. Those are fantastic telescopes. I have one of those, and you're not going to regret buying one of these. So at the $10,000 level, same thing. We're going to build off of what we had at the $2,500 level. I'm going to go ahead and keep the 8-inch Macassar grain on an equatorial go-to mount. We're going to keep the 8-inch Dobsonian. We're going to keep the killer refractor, the Takahashi FC100. And with the money that's left over, what we're going to do at this level, you deserve a light bucket. That's right. You deserve one night when you're going to go out and really try to hunt something dim down and get serious. This is a telescope that is big and unwieldy, and you're not going to use it every night. And I'm going to pick for you an Orion XX14G. It's a Dobsonian go-to reflector, generous 14-inch aperture, and the price is quite reasonable at around $3,100. Okay, so we have a little bit of money left over, and with what's left, we're going to buy something really cheap. It's a grab-and-go telescope that you could just pick up with one hand and go outside. Everything else we have seems so serious, so we're going to have pick a nice little casual telescope, and I'm going to recommend for you an Astrotech AT72 on a Vixen Porta mount. You're going to spend five to $800 on this, and again, a very simple, easy-to-like refractor. There have been a couple of different versions of it. They are both recommended. You want to get adventurous, you want to spend a little bit more money, you can do that. You can get a 80 millimeter class refractor from Explorer Scientific or Skywatcher or Vixen or Stellar View or Orion. Okay, so the $50,000 level. This may or may not surprise you, but I get asked about this category quite a bit. People looking to spend 50K, 100K, or even more. So at this level, the mount starts to become very important. That's true of all the price categories. You need to pick your mount and then decide what's going to fit on it. But the stakes are much higher here, so we're going to go ahead and do this first. We're going to pick the mount and then decide what we're going to put on it. And I'm going to choose for you a paramount. $10,000 for the equatorial head alone and worth every penny. You're probably going to be putting this in a permanent observatory or a pier of some kind, but you can actually put this on a portable rig. They make a dedicated tripod for it. It's about $2,000, and what I've seen people do is they leave the whole thing assembled in the garage, put it on a wheeled dolly, and then they just roll the thing outside when they need to use it. Okay, so what are we going to put on the Paramount? Well. I can't think of anything more iconic than the Celestron C14. So much history, so much culture, so much personality in a schmidt cassegrain and it's pretty rare that you see this in an SCT. The C14 is one of the few schmidt cassegrains that if you buy one, people are going to want to come over and look at it. Not just through it, but at it. Okay, so at this price level, you of course need a world-class, first-rate killer refractor, and I'm going to pick for you an Astrophysics AP-130. Now, these are $6,500, and at this point, Astrophysics is probably as famous for their waiting lists as they are for the quality of their products. I had a club member friend who waited 10 years for one of these on a waiting list when it finally came in. He slid the case under his bed and slept with it that way. I know somebody else who has an AP refractor, and he doesn't actually use it. What he does is he opens the case, and he smells the foam inside. Yeah. We should talk about this phenomenon sometime in another video. Okay, so why am I recommending a telescope that you can't buy? Well, you're not going to spend $6,500 on a new one of these. What you're going to do is go out and get a used one and overpay for it. Yes, that's what you're going to do. I'm sending you out there with $10,000. You may not need all of it, but who knows? Just pay whatever the seller's asking. Look, you're not getting any younger. You're not going to take it with you. Just do it and be happy. A great refractor like this needs a great mount, and I'm going to pick for you the Astrophysics Mach 1 or Mach 2 mount. Same situation. You're not going to find one of these things new. You're going to sit on a waiting list forever. They're $6,500 and $8,300 new, but again, I'm sending you out there with ten grand. You may not need it, but go ahead and just get yourself one of these and put the telescope and the mount together. 
Now you may be asking, Ed, why are you only going after a 5-inch astrophysics? Why not go after something bigger? Well, you can. If you have the money, absolutely, go for it. The thing is, at this $50,000 level, we're not quite made of money yet, so we do have to kind of watch where our dollars go. Okay, what else are we going to get for our $50,000? Well, at this level, you deserve a genuine light bucket. And I'm going to choose for you the Obsession 22-inch UC. That's their new Ultra Compact series, $11,000. You're going to use this telescope for nights when you really want to quit goofing off. You want to search in your star atlas for the tiniest, dimmest galaxies, and you're going to go after it. You're going to want to look at something tonight that nobody else that you know has ever seen before. So everything else we picked for you in this category is so big and so serious, you're going to need a casual grab-and-go telescope that you can just go outside at a moment's notice. And I'm going to choose for you a Teleview 85. Uncompromising performance, $2,300 in a 3.3-inch telescope. And we could put this on a go-to tracking equatorial mid-size mount, but we're not going to do that. We're going to put it on something casual. Teleview's own Gibraltar mount is going to fit the bill. They have a new version out. It's $1,000. That may seem like a lot for an Altaz mount, but, you know, hey, it's a Teleview. So I don't know how close you are to the $50,000 so far, because I don't know how much you spent on the astrophysics stuff, but what's an extra $400 between friends? After you spend all of this on all of that equipment, you're going to buy one additional telescope, and you're going to spend $400 on, you guessed it, an 8-inch Dobsonian. After all this, you may find that that is your favorite telescope of all. It's okay. It'll be our little secret. So, there you have it, a list of recommended telescopes at various price points. I don't think this should come as a huge surprise to you. There's Orion at the low end, Mead and Celestron in the middle, and the handmade high-end stuff at the top. Do you have a great collection of telescopes? What list have you compiled? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, keep collecting telescopes, and I'll see you soon.